Hello class 6, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are fine. This is your DJ ma'am again. So in the last video, already we covered some of the topics of the chapter. Chapter 1, the earth in the solar system. What we learned in the last video? We learned about the solar system, about the 8 planets, about our unique planet earth and why we called earth as a unique planet. I told you about the only natural satellite of the earth that is moon. So now let us go ahead with the definition of satellite. Now what is a satellite? Satellite is a celestial body that moves around planets in the same way as the planets move around the sun. You can see here is a diagram of earth and its natural satellite moon. Now, moon revolves around the earth in the same way the, as the earth revolves around the sun. Now, satellites are two types. One nat natural satellite and the other one artificial satellite. Now, what are natural satellites? Natural satellites are celestial bodies that orbits or revolves around the larger bodies and are formed naturally what are artificial satellites then artificial satellites are bodies that are designed by scientists. So we can say that natural satellites are actually formed naturally and artificial satellites are not formed naturally. They are formed by the human beings that they are formed by the scientists. So natural satellites are not controlled by humans. But artificial satellites are controlled by humans. Natural satellites are permanent. Artificial satellites are temporary or we can say temporal. Natural satellites are mainly formed of rocks, minerals. But artificial satellites are made up of electronic materials and metals. What is the use of artificial satellite? It is mainly used for communication and it is used by the scientists to gather information about the space and natural satellite it is not used for communication. What will be the example of natural satellite? The moon. And what will be the example of artificial satellite? See, this is an artificial satellite. Like Insat, Aryavatta, Sputnik, all these are examples of artificial satellite. Now, let us go ahead with the natural satellite of our Earth, that is moon. So I hope so you people understood the definition of satellite and how natural satellite and artificial satellite differ from each other. So now let us move the moon. It is the only natural satellite of Earth. It's Diameter is one fourth 
that of earth it appears large to us right why because it is the nearest celestial body that is why it appears near to us very larger to us it is only 384000 kilometer away from the earth so you can understand how near it is to our planet earth moon takes 27 days to complete its revolution around the earth. Interestingly, it takes the same time to complete its rotation also. That is why we can only see one side of the moon. Why? Because it takes exactly the same time, that is 27 days, to complete its revolution and rotation. In the moon, life is not possible. Why life is not possible in moon? Because there is no air no water and climate is very harsh so why life is not possible in moon because there is no air no water no atmosphere climate is very harsh very cold people cannot live there so it is not at all suitable for human beings to live in the moon in moon we can see craters there are different craters there are hills and we can see this crater and hills their shadow when we can see the moon now there was a man whose name was neil armstrong he is a man who for the first time walked on the moon when on 21st July 1969. So what we learned about the moon? The moon is the only natural satellite of earth. Its diameter is one fourth that of earth. It is the nearest celestial body. That is why it appears so bigger to us. It is only 384,000 kilometer away from the earth. And it takes exactly the same time to complete its revolution and rotation. That is 27 days. And there is no air, water, climate is very harsh. That is why human beings cannot live in the moon. Now you people may have noticed different shapes, different sizes of moon, right? That we call phases of moon. What we call them? Phases of moon. Like someday you can see a full moon like this we call it as what when we when we can see the full moon during the purnima right we call it full moon sometime full moon is not visible we call it new moon sometime we can see only one third of the moon like this sometime we can see just a sickle like this that is we call it as a crescent moon. What we call it? Crescent moon. So we can see different shape, different sizes of moon in the night sky. So now let us move ahead with two more interesting terms that are asteroids and meteoroids. What are asteroids? There are numerous small pieces of rocks which move around the sun. It is believed that when the planets were formed, some pieces of rocks 
are broken from the planets and they move around the sun and they are actually the asteroids. You can see here that between the orbit of Mars and the orbit of Jupiter, there are certain pieces of rocks which I have drawn here. What are these? These are actually the asteroids. So the asteroids are the small pieces of rocks which move around the sun and where they are found between the orbit of Mars and the orbit of Jupiter. Now let us move ahead with the very interesting term meteoroids. Now what are meteoroids? Meteoroids are again small pieces of rock. They are also small pieces of rocks which move around the sun. Actually, they are the pieces of rock which are, which from where they came? They came from the comets. Now, what are comets? Comets are certain debris. That means pieces of rocks which are actually formed of ice. Then you will find their dust and different gases which form the comet. Uh, mainly, we, we call it as Halley's Comet. When it comes, it comes like this, like it got a tail. It got a tail. After every 76 years, we can actually see a comet. It is estimated that this year, in May 23rd, we may see a comet. Now, so meteoroids are actually parts of comet. Now, meteoroids mean the small pieces of rocks which move around the sun. Now, when the meteoroids try to enter the sun, what happens? Try to enter the surface of our earth. What happens? Due to the friction, they get burned. Now, when they try to enter due to friction, when they burn, they enter like a shooting star and we call it a meteor. Now, after getting burned and after entering the Earth's atmosphere, after landing to the Earth's atmosphere, they became a meteoroid. And when they enter the surface of the Earth, they create a hollow. What they create? They create a hollow. So what are meteoroids? Small pieces of rocks which move around the sun. When it tries to enter the Earth's surface, because of the friction, because in the earth there is friction, due to friction it gets born and when it tries to enter, it is, it is like a shooting star, we call it as a meteor. Now as it enters the land surface of the earth, it becomes a meteorite and it creates a hollow. Now we understood what are asteroids and what are meteoroids and what are comets. Let us move ahead to galaxy. What are galaxy? A system of billions of stars, clouds of gases, dust, it includes our solar system. We live in the Milky Way galaxy. We also call it as Akash Ganga. So, in a galaxy, we can see millions of stars, clouds of gases, dust and solar system. And which galaxy we live in? The Milky Way galaxy or Akash Ganga. Do you know which is the nearest galaxy? Who is, who is our actually neighbor galaxy? Andromeda galaxy. They are our nearest neighbor now these galaxies millions of galaxies what they form millions of galaxies form our universe form our Universe. So what we learned, asteroids, meteoroids, comets, universe, galaxy, 
Then about the moon, what are satellites, what are nat natural satellites, what are man-made satellites. Now, who are astronomers? We learned so many topics about the celestial bodies. We learned about moon, earth, planet, so many things, right? Who are astronomers? Astronomers are the one who actually study about all the celestial bodies that can be seen in the sky, that, that can be seen in the space. So they are the one who studies about the planets, about the uh, natural satellites, about the solar system, everything. They are called the astronomers. So with this, we are actually completing the chapter. I already explained you the very first topic of the chapter that what are celestial bodies, what is a star, what is a planet. I hope so you people can differentiate now between a star and a planet. What a constellation. Did you saw some Shakta Rishi? I hope so you people really easily can locate Shakta Rishi. Now, what is a pole star? Why do we need a pole star? Then what is a solar system? The sun, the head of the family. Then we learned about the Earth, the different planets of the solar system. What are dwarf planets, asteroids, meteoroids, moon, satellites, natural satellites, man-made satellites, galaxy, then comets, astronomers, universe. With this, we are actually completing the chapter. So, I hope so you people understood the chapter. I hope so you understood the videos. Uh, for standing and signing off still if you have any problem you can ask your queries in the group or you can directly contact me. Thank you